Um, this is just a little video of Mark. I have to say just Mark because I didn't have anything to do with it. I feel guilty, but I didn't have anything to do with it. Mark doing the blacking on the boat. Yeah, this was about, well, it was the 22nd of March that we was pulled out to um, have the blacking done. Yeah. It's been two years since we had the blacking done. So, um, as you guys know, that's round about the maximum you want to leave it if you're a bitumen-based um, blacking. And this is not a, well, it's one of my not how-to, but how I do. So this is not a tutorial or an instruction of how to do the blacking, but it's how I've done the blacking, and I think I've done it rather well. I think you um, did. If you think I could have done anything better or I've done anything wrong, leave it in the uh, comments section below. Always, always enjoy sort of some uh, constructive criticism. And, uh, yes, yeah, so there's, there is some, um, I'm going to give you a breakdown of the costs at the end of the video but there's also some really important things I want to cover at the end of the video and especially if you're about to do your blacking um, this is essential information. What are we doing today Deborah? We're having the boat taken out of the water. And how are you feeling? Rough. Yes yeah, so we've got to sit in the car for a couple of hours while they um, take the boat out they'll pressure wash it down and then put it over on blocks on the hard standing so me, Debbie, and Bonnie and Alfie. Yeah. Go, go sit in the car for a couple of hours. So. Look at that, he's done that before. Straight in, no foreplay. And then once he's all the way forward, there's hydraulic rams at the back of the trailer that will just lift, lift her up. Well, that's the boat out, no dramas. Always strange seeing somebody else uh, helm your own boat, but uh, once they get it put over there, I'll just have a word with the chaps, make sure there's nothing amiss with it. Then they'll wash it down, and we can get on there in a couple of hours, hopefully. Yeah, so the anodes we had put on two years ago still look fairly good. Bit of life left in those. Obviously that one would have been the first one and still some left on that. Right, there's lots of different blackings out there, uh, bitumen based blackings, and I've gone for one called um, Elastic Black. Yeah, that's a 20 litre tub, and that one cost me, I think it was £149, so not cheap. And we're going to start here at the pointy end down this side, and we get one coat on today. That should all be dry, ready for tomorrow. Got a little pipey arrangement there. That's the outlet for the sink. And 
what you don't want is um, water running down there when you've got uh, wet blacking on there, so that little pipe just diverts that. You can see the difference um, where I've done so far. I think that's taken me about 20 minutes to do that section. Yeah, so I've got a, a fence brush and it's just, you can't load it too much because I tend to be dropping more on the floor. So it's just a case of getting enough on the brush, working it backwards and forwards, up and down into all the little nooks and crannies. And you stand back and you see all the bits you've missed and just pray that the weather holds. Oh. Big 20 litre tin. Yeah, and as I said, you can't really rush this. You can only load so much on your boat. And all these little marks you see, that's just little imperfections. That would be the starting of pitting. Um, but to get, make sure you get in them all, you have to sort of go in a multi-direction to make sure you get into all those little nooks and crannies. And the sooner do you think you've covered them all, more, more appear. So you're just working that Working that bitumen in, you can't really go any quicker than this, man. My arm's aching already. If I try and load the brush up too much, I tend to drop more of it on the floor. As I'm doing there. Yeah, I think the, the water line is about here and this is normally the area that corrodes most on a boat. Um, above the water line that looks a bit rough but you don't really get the corrosion there. Although we want it looking nice and nice and black like the rest of it. What are we today? I think we're about eight, eight or nine degrees today. Um, I took the the big tub of blacking, had that in the boat um, all day yesterday, overnight, uh, just to help with the vic <laughs> spit it out, viscosity levels of the blacking. Um, it's developing the skin on the top as we speak, but just keep mixing that. And uh, my hairs are falling off my brush. If I was glossing the bedroom door, I'd probably be a little bit more, a little bit more concerned with that. But I don't think that's going to matter. Well, that's looking at me imaginary watch. Um, I started at nine. It's now 11 o'clock, so it's two hours to do down that one side. Um, my wrist is knackered through painting. Um, yeah, so I'm pleased with how it's gone. Um, now I've got to do the other side. I've actually got a my first ever wed funeral. A friend of mine back in Norfolk uh, passed away unexpectedly a few weeks ago, and that's his funeral today. Well, since all this lockdown has been going on, uh, funeral directors and um, crematoriums and bits and pieces have managed to come together with um, these web links. So I've been sent the code, um, so I'm now off for a cuppa and pay my last respects. Well, day two, sun is shining, absolutely peed it down last night. Um, so the boat was a bit wet. But we've just been and had um, Deb's bloods done and that's give it just that time to uh, dry off. Um, 
yeah so I've done all the hard work yesterday getting in with the brush so I'm gonna do this second coat with a roller I actually found some red paint that I've redone the tunnel band with so uh, yeah looking forward to it yeah so she's looking a little bit better than she did before I managed to do all underneath all underneath there without getting me hair messy and we're having a little modification done to the weed hatch right so I suppose this could be classed as part of my not how to but how I do um, yesterday done it all with the brush getting all these little micro pits they're, they're nothing major less than a half a mil I mean some of it is through the old blacking um, but what I'm doing now is going over with the roller and not trying to do too much at once but um, this is how I'm doing it I'm not saying this is the correct way but it's working for me so I'll lay it on quite thick about eight inches wide and then I'll just take it that way work it into all the all the little areas and then just finish it off with that yeah so we're doing doing sections about that big at a time and it seems to be working nicely my shoulders a little bit stiff from yesterday but hey ho it's blowing a absolute hooli outside um, Sunday afternoon we should go back in the water tomorrow morning weather dependent um don't know whether they still do it in gale force winds and the only thing left i've got to do is to put back in my new weed hatch cover and i'll show you what they've done so this was the lid to our um, weed hatch and that was all there was to it what we've now got and we've had this post put in and the uh, i don't know what you'd call it baffle plate put in at the bottom so it seals top and bottom and we've got some nice new pointy finger get down there yeah nice new sealing tape all around which will seal against uh, the lip of the weed hatch box there so that's all that in position it's just the locking bar to put in which I shall do in a moment and as we can see underneath underneath now we haven't got the big uh, gaping hole yeah so the the idea is the as the water passes over whether you're going forward or in reverse it's not being churned up in that um, weed hatch box so there'll be less turbulence and uh, a smoother ride hopefully <laughs> Not a lot of room for error there, but Alex has done this plenty of times. I've got total faith in him. And the hydraulic rams will lift it off the blocks at the back. And that's it. We're off. So as you can see, the boys uh, did really well. The boys, look at you. 
Alex and uh, I can't remember his name. The young lad who drove the boat now. Uh, Will, who done the um, little bit of fabrication work on the weed hatch. Yeah, you, it, you can't fault them. It was so stress free. They such lovely lads. Do anything for you. Um, and sort of being on on hard standing wasn't wasn't that bad. No, the the worst bit about it, we had to have step ladders to mm. get in and out. Um, so you're taking the dogs up and down the ladders yes. three or four times a day. Yeah, yeah. and me They're up and down a ladder bit. a couple of times yeah, a day yeah. was not a good sight. Yeah, yeah. I insisted <laughs> no short skirts that week, so they had to wear their leggings. <laughs> <laughs> I was then going to say you didn't wear your skirt <laughs> that week. No, that was at the cleaners. <laughs> and it was actually strange being on the boat and the boat not moving. Yes. There was, oh. Yeah, there was a couple of times the pier of us had got up to do something, actually lost her balance because yeah. you you get used to compensating for the movement of the boat. Yeah, you see legs. was rigid. Yeah, very yeah, strange. Yeah, so that, that took some getting used to. But <laughs> apart, apart from that, weather was on our side um, the whole yeah. week. Yeah. yeah, so our initial reason for doing the black in ourselves was cost. Yeah. Um, we thought it was going to be considerably cheaper <laughs> doing it ourselves, but as things added up, I don't think it was. We never actually got a um, quote from the guys Aqueduct Marina for them to do the bitumen type blacking. We had a quote for... Epoxy the two the two pack epoxy and the sand grip blast and I'll probably talk about that a little bit later, um, but yeah we thought it was going to work out reasonably cheap but things slowly add up. They do. I mean it was a hundred and thirty pound to get us out of the water, and obviously hundred and thirty pound to get us in the water. Um, to jet wash was ninety five pounds. Um, and hard standing for a week was £68. And then the, the 20 uh, litre tub of black and I bought was £149. Yeah. So for the in and out, wash, hard standing and the actual blacking, that came to £572. Yeah. 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 Then I had the uh, modifications done on the weed hatch, which was an additional £95, which brought us up to... 667. Had I been more technical, I could have had all these numbers rolling on the screen. I <laughs> the old fashioned way. Well, actually, I used my new multi coloured pen to uh, highlight some things. But you've got the step ladders, um, the, the brushes, the and, and things like that. Yeah, that was £40 for the step ladders, £15 for the brushes. So, all in all, um, it came to £722 for us to do it. Um, like I say, it was more expensive than I thought that was going to be. But peace of mind, mm. not saying these guys would have done it wrong, but peace of mind knowing it's done right after my last experience of blacking. Yeah. Now, this is where I get to um, the important bit. Whatever um, blacking you're going to use, now we use this time um, SML Ballastic. Last time when we had the boat blacked by somebody, it was International Intertough 16. Now, with each of these products, you have a data sheet of drying times between coats, hardening times before it goes back in the water. And the the drying times for, and I'm just going to refer to my computer, the drying times for the um, SML Ballastic was at 10 degrees C. Now I think I mentioned we was around about the 7, 8 degrees. Um, it's 18 hours between coats. Now we actually left, we had a day between coats. We mm. arranged to come out for the whole, whole week. Um, so the idea was a coat per day. I want to give three coats, although these recommend two. I want to give three coats, and then it gave us four days hardening off before we went back in the water. Um, yes, and it's at 23 degrees, it says 12 hours between coats. So as you come into the summer months, you can actually, um, possibly on a day, get a coat done first thing in the morning, and then last thing um, in the evening before the, the air cools off. Now, our experience two years ago when we was blacked, it was a spur at the moment thing. We got a, uh, a late um, cancellation slot in a dry dock. Um, now, we was new to all this. Yeah, the boat was in and out rather quickly. 
and I think it had two coats, but um, and with the Intertuff uh, International Intertuff 16, it actually says, and the, we're talking frosty February uh, times at five degrees, minimum of 24 hours between coats, and that is minimum. And uh, you're looking at three days hardening before it goes back in the water. Well, I think we was the bare minimum between coats, uh, the 24 hours. And I know for a fact the last coat went on about 4.30 in the afternoon. And the dry dock was flooded again at 6.30 in the morning. So 16 hours as opposed to um, what it said on there which was where well, five degrees hardening time three days so and we actually found within within about a month uh, below the waterline um, a sort of what I would call leopard spot rust rust spots all mm. along a uh, bit disappointing yeah, but again I'm not not an expert um, but there's stuff that goes onto these data sheets for a reason mm. and obviously we was nowhere near those time scales so very very important guys if you're going to do it yourself or anybody else is going to do it for you make sure um, that the time scale is enough to allow the drying between the coats and more importantly between that last coat and it going back in the water yeah now as you know we're at um, aqueduct marina the, f the facilities they have here for doing work on boats is fantastic and I think they're probably one of the um, main ones in the area for uh, grip blasting boats for the um, application of the two pack uh, epoxy uh, coating a little bit out of our price range this time mm -hmm. so we could have to uh, start saving I think my dear yeah um, but just just a rough idea for the for the grip blasting and um, the coating it was about three and a half grand we want the base plate done at the same time about another 1500 pounds so around about 5000 pounds but i've seen the work the guys do and it is it is fantastic yeah, yeah. what they do the, the prep work with the grip blasting they've got it down to a fine art now uh, for that blast pattern for the uh, two pot two, two pack, pack epoxy say that after a couple of <laughs> right nice points he has <laughs> yeah t two pack epoxy resin uh, for that to adhere to the shell yeah yeah so i think we'll be looking at ways of uh, possibly financing that next time it yeah. needs to be done yeah in a couple of years yes yeah yes yeah, so i hope that was um informative um and for anybody out there who's either going to be blacking their boat or getting their boat blacked just that little bit of information um to help you well just decide what to do how to do it um, yeah, yeah. I, I might be overthinking it with the, with the with the data sheets, but as I said, they're there for a reason. If it says this time between coats and this time for, for hardening, hard uh, yeah. those guys are the experts. If you're unsure, contact the manufacturers, uh, their help department, I'm sure they'll be able to um, reassure you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. That's it, yeah. yeah. That's it for this exciting yes. blacking video. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he did say he was going to give you this blacking video, so yes, yeah, yeah. That's our surprise blacking video. So if you enjoyed this video, yes, hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, press the subscribe button. If you want future notifications of any other videos we upload, the bell icon and keep the comments. Yes, love your comments. I'm looking forward to the comments on this one because maybe I've done something wrong and be kind to him. Yeah, be kind, be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see, see you, you next, next week. week. Bye. Bye.